Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us uh, today for this special session of court honoring um, James Sandoma, a member of the Lycoming Law Association. Um, I know from speaking with the chair of the resolution committee that no members of his family were here, uh, but um, I'm just grateful for everyone who's here participating and also for those that are taking the time to view this video on the Lycoming Law Association website. So um, back in April, um, the court appointed a committee to prepare a report and resolution recognizing the life and accomplishments of Jim Sandoma, uh, Judge Lavecchio, retired Judge uh, William Kieser, Pete Campana, and Skip Greedy were all appointed to be a part of that committee. So at this time now, um, Judge Lavecchio, I'm going to recognize you to uh, present the committee report and resolution. Thank you, um, Your Honor. Uh, and the other judges, uh, to the honorable judges of said court, uh, on or about April 6th of 2021, the honorable Nancy L. Butts, president judge of the 29th Judicial District of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, appointed the undersigned committee to prepare a report and resolutions memorializing the life and legal accomplishments of James F. Sendoma for submission to the court when completed. Accordingly, your committee respectfully submits the following report and resolutions. James F. Sandoma was born in Williamsport, Pennsylvania on January 28, 1927, the son of his proud Italian-American parents, Michael and Antoinette Neely Sandoma. He grew up in the Williamsport area and attended the Williamsport High School in the early 1940s. He joined the US Navy at the age of 15 after forging his birth certificate and served in the South Pacific aboard the USS Catalpa during World War II. The Catalpa carried out various duties in the Solomon Islands during Jim's tenure, including tending to nets, laying mooring buoys, offering towing and salvage services, and providing divers for essential maintenance services for other ships and fleets. In the fall of 1944, Jim was part of the staging for the invasion of Palau Islands a vital preparation for the return to the Philippines. On September 15th, 1944, Jim and his mates stood sentry as troops invaded Palulu. And I, I don't, I think I messed that up. It's P-E-L-E-L-I-U. And then sailed to mine infested waters to prepare for major fleet anchorage. According to Jim, he saw plenty of beachheads getting as close to the beaches as possible, riding in a mortar boat and firing mortars. Jim never hesitated to tell war stories, and he certainly had plenty. He was very proud of his service to his country. He recalled major battles at Okinawa and Iwo Jima. On more than one occasion, his ship was attacked by kamikaze pilots, and he finally recalled shooting down Japanese planes. The Catalpa received two battle stars for World War II service. He did breathe a sigh of relief, however, when he found out that he would not be part of a planned invasion of Japan. Upon his release from military service, he returned to Williamsport and began working on the dike. He described it as of his first real job. It was hard work lifting stones and using a hammer. He then took a job at AFCO as a machine operator and obtained his high school diploma. He attended then Dickinson Seminary, now Lycoming College. He graduated and attended the Washington School of Law at American University in Washington, DC. He graduated with honors in 1953. He joined the Lycoming Bar Association in 1957 and for many years represented thousands of clients on varied legal matters. He was a consummate general practitioner. Among his many accomplishments, he served as counsel to the Pennsylvania Horse Racing Commission under then Governor Schaap. Among his more notable cases were Valley Forge Racing Association v. State Horse Racing Commission, where he was successful in defending an action against the commission to reverse a licensing decision. In Stokes v. Lecce, L-E-C-C-E, -E, he defended the chairman of the commission in a civil suit, and although losing a verdict, the damages were limited to only $10,000 and no attorney's fees. In fact, the case is sometimes cited for the principle that, quote, fairness of procedure is due process in the primary sense. It is ingrained in our national traditions and is designed to maintain them. And in that case, it cited Justice Frankfurter, who said that, in Joint Anti-Fascist Committee v. McGrath. Jim was a man and attorney of character, class, and fairness. He was always willing to help, but more importantly, he was always willing to ask for help 
from other attorneys in order to best serve his clients. As the general practice of law became more difficult, Jim stayed the course and fought the great fight. His kind of lawyer is a dying breed. His loss is a huge loss to the community at large and the legal community. Jim is remembered for his affable manner, his sincere interest in humanity, his service to his church and his commitment to his family. He was predeceased by his wife. He is survived by numerous siblings, children, grandchildren, step-grandchildren, and even eight great-grandchildren and nine step-great-grandchildren. <clears throat> Seneca, a philosopher and writer, once commented that, as is a tale, so is a life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, is what matters. Jim was fortunate on both accounts, living a long and good life. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the undersigned committee approved by this court, joined in by the Lycoming County Bar Association and Lycoming County Bar members, do hereby recognize the passing of James F. Sendoma Esquire. And in his death, we remember his many contributions to his country, the citizens of this country and others, his family and this bar. Resolved further that these resolutions be spread at length upon the minutes of your honorable court and be published in the Lycoming County Reporter. Finally resolved that this court and committee and the Lycoming County Bar extend to his family our deep and heartfelt felt expressions of sympathy. Respectfully submitted, Mark F. Lavecchio, Chairman, the Honorable William S. Keyser, Senior Judge, Charles F. Grevy III, and Peter Key Campana. Uh, at this time, uh, Judge, I would ask, we're gonna do something different. Uh, we're gonna play, uh, thank you, Judge, for your ability to do this. We're gonna play an interview that the Sun Gazette had with Jim uh, not too long before his death. I wasn't in the service when Pearl Harbor was bombed. And I remember hearing about that and I got to thinking, geez, I gotta do something. It was almost like they bombed my backyard. In my general quarters position was just to float around the engine room and make sure that everything was okay there. That was my pride and joy of the the engine. We had eight engines, and uh, once I got one, once I got one started, I would just put your clutch into the others, and that one would start the other. See, we had a an engine set up on what they call the fan tail of our ship. I, that's the rear. And we'd start that up, and I could make smoke fog like. They called on us to lay down the fog, and I knew I knew what that meant right away. That meant that there were enemy ships in the area. Because we, they, we we laid down fog, nobody could get through it. <laughs> and, and we could cover, believe me, we could cover a, a great area with that fog. But our gun crew, mm -hmm. they shot down uh, a, um, a Japanese suicide plane and damned if he didn't land right in between my ship and a sister ship of mine was the number 742. He landed right in between there. But, but I, I didn't get to see his body, his foot come up on our ship. <laughs> that, that I remember, that stuck with me ever since. And, and uh, anyhow, that was one time when I, I, I was kind of worried. Mm -hmm. See, the Battle of Palau was uh, kind of, we took over a, a little group of islands. My ship and a, I think one or two other, we were assigned to duty to just keep going around that island, keep going around that island and make sure that those Japanese didn't try to get off, which they did. And one morning we got up and we found out that one of those little scallywaggers, he went out during the night, he pinned some explosives on the propellers, the propeller shaft of the 404, I'll never forget the number, the 404, and then got away. Next morning when they, when they got up and started up, blew the tail end off. <laughs> But right. thankfully, nobody got killed. Uh, no, no, the one time I was scared is one of my engines went down. That's what, that's... And I had to make a complete overhaul, and I, and I was working on it while while we, while <coughs> we were looking at the beach and the Marines were, were lobbing the mortars out. There's a war going on upstairs, I remember thinking. Then I told myself, well, I... I don't don't think about that. You just don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Somehow or another, it goes away, and you you finish what you're supposed to do. I'm so young that I can't remember a lot of stuff. There's some things that I guess I don't want to remember. But I was so homesick and tired of hearing about all the hill in there that all I wanted to get home. Mm -hmm.
Thank you, Judge Butts. Um, I just want to add a couple things. Uh, I, I met Jim early on when I moved to the area in the um, mid to, to later 80s. Uh, he was friends with my father-in-law and um, my brother-in-law, Pete. Uh, there was this uh, Italian connection. Little did he know that uh, I'm only half Italian, and, uh, but I, I, I played the part anyway. Uh, he, uh, I, I talked to him many, many different times. We'd call, he'd call me sometimes about some criminal issues or he'd call me about some other issues. I might call him, but I can honestly tell you our conversation quickly went from the law to just life. I'm not sure we ever got into any depth about the law or the cases or anything else. He ended up talking about uh, asking me about my family, talking about his family, talking about the war, talking about different things, talking about whether I was going to join the Italian American club, uh, where my kids were going to school, what they were doing, you name it, we talked about it. Uh, and uh, he was just the kindest, uh, gentlest individual I think I've, I've ever met in terms of being sincerely and honestly interested in, in me and my life and what was going on. And I, I loved hearing his stories too. Uh, it was, it, was, it was really a pleasure uh, having him around and having him be able to express, uh, you know, the humanity. Uh, you know, many times we lawyers, that's all we do is we talk about the law. Uh, but it was nice uh, to see him and, and not talk about it. Judge Keezer, anything you want to add? You're, um, you're still muted. Okay. All right. I think, I think we got it now. Okay. Uh, it, Jim, uh, as the resolutions point out, out was affable, uh, that, but he was also laughable. Uh, uh, Jim uh, was one of the uh, first persons uh, of the uh, bar that when I uh, became a member back in 68, that I uh, spent some time uh, talking with and some coffee and uh, th things of that nature, uh, and quickly found out that uh, one thing Jim and I had in common is that uh, my dad, who was then uh, deceased, uh, had worked for uh, Jim's father-in-law and uh, the Brent, Brenda's dad, and, and that was uh, you know kind of unique and, and interesting. Uh, my dad and Jim weren't really acquainted, but that was ju just one connection. Uh, but Jim, you know. I never had an encounter with Jim where you didn't come away smiling. And I, I mean, there, there was never a, a bad word, a harsh word, a, never a raised voice. Uh, he uh, was uh, one of the contacts I had with him a lot was uh, in the divorce masterships uh, that uh, were uh, going around then and hand out where the masters uh, would write up uh, the uh, divorce uh, uh, trade or di divorce uh, grounds and facts and uh, issue uh, order for approval by the court. And uh, the grounds uh, for divorce at that point really were indignities. And uh, many attorneys had some real imagination as to what uh, would constitute indignities and would present them to the master and make you scratch your head and look for a case. Uh, Jim uh, would uh, be among the best of them with uh, the indignities. Uh, that uh, didn't really seem to amount to much to me, maybe. But then, surprisingly, he'd pull a case out and say, you might think this is unusual, Judge, but here, I found this case. And uh, that, that was uh, always just an interesting uh, uh, aspect of him. But, but as uh, Judge Levecchio said, uh, he, he always you know, wanted to know about the family, wanted to know uh, about life uh, in general, how things were, were going for you and uh, would always uh, have something, you know, really great to share. Uh, he stuck it out very well as a sole practitioner. I, I had tried at one point to go uh, back into doing that, that type of work and found uh, that I couldn't hack it. But, but Jim hung with it. He served his uh, clients uh, well. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it, it was a blessing 
I uh, hadn't seen Jim probably now, well, at least six years that, that I can think of. Uh, but it was so good to see that video, uh, Judge Let's uh, thank you for putting us onto that because, um, you know, he, he had his mind, he, he had uh, many of his mannerisms and expressions and everything. And it's just great to be able to see that he uh, was rewarded, uh, you know, with that long life that uh, was a good life. That's it. Thank you. Um, Skip, any words? You need to unmute. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes. Very good. Uh, I would join in both Judge Lavecchio and Judge Keezer in thanking for that video because I can personally state that Jim was a, uh, a real observer of the Second World War. He was very proud of his uh, relation to it and being able to serve in it. And certainly that was often a part of the conversations uh, that I would have with him. I had the opportunity, I don't know how many there might have been, but there were several divorces that uh, I had handled in my younger days. And Jim, uh, uh, I helped to guide me through some of those as some of the older members of the bar had done at that point too. And certainly at every opportunity, Jim was interested in knowing uh, how my family was doing. Obviously he knew my parents very well and enjoyed the associations that he had had with them. Uh, in later years, and obviously after he had retired, I did have a very good opportunity to see Jim in a couple a couple times, he was in a particular assisted living um, home here out in the township that uh, um, had been a very good restaurant, the hillside, and then turned into a nursing home. I saw Jim out there a couple times uh, when I was out there visiting a client or two. And he always would say, Skip, sit down and let's chat for a couple minutes. He was interested in what was going on in the community. Certainly, if I would know anything about anything of the attorneys in the uh, in the vicinity, and um, he was always a good one to interrelate with stories that he knew of others and was interested in certainly what I was doing. And then more of an opportunity when he was up at what was known as Roseview Court, uh, he lived in there for a few years, and I also had some relatives in there. And every opportunity that I would see Jim, uh, he would say, sit down, let's chat a few minutes. And certainly I enjoyed the opportunity to do that. But even at that point, his uh, recollections and his perception and prospect, his perspective on the war and how he had helped to serve was a big part of his life. And I uh, appreciated the opportunity to know him. And I really appreciate the opportunity that our local bar association does take the opportunity to perhaps um, introduce some of these attorneys that certainly the younger people of our bar don't know of, uh, but even with someone that had been retired as long as Jim was, I appreciated the opportunity that uh, gave us to join together, share a few thoughts on it. Um, uh, certainly, I did not know his family um, very much, although would see him uh, particularly up in Roseview once in a while and would have the opportunity to share some thoughts with him. Even at that point, he was very interested in what my family, my children were doing and uh, sharing thoughts that he had and other people that he would have run into. So that I really appreciated the opportunity to know Jim, to get him. As I say, that video that Judge Butts and Judge Lavecchio were able to find and um, put apart uh, was a excellent and a unusual 
part of one of these uh, memorial services. And I really appreciate the opportunity to have these few remarks also. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Uh, Judge Lavecchio, uh, Mr. Campana, the other, well, here he comes. He dropped out, but now he's back. Okay, I missed him too. There he is. There you are, Mr. Campana. It's your turn if you have any words of remembrance. I do, Your Honor. Unfortunately, our internet is going in and out over here. Go right ahead. All right, wait a minute. Yeah, okay. Jimmy Sendoma, he was really good friends with how they could. Uh oh. It was such a great start, too. I, yeah. Know, I first started pra practicing law was 1970, over to the office after work, and John and Ambrose and me and him. And there were two against two. <laughs> you know, the two veterans, my uncle John was, he was a veteran of World War II, and Jimmy, of course, they were all, they were hawks. And my father and I were dubs. So we would have some heated arguments about whether we should continue going on with the war and, and Jimmy was a he was a patriot as was my uncle John so was I and so was my dad but we had different viewpoints on that particular issue but it was so enjoyable to hear their you know to hear their arguments and uh, I'll never forget that and when I, I, I did some social security law long ago and whenever I had a question it was Jim Sonoma that I would call to ask about social security law he he was probably the, the most knowledgeable in that area that, that I knew of anyway. And I haven't seen him for a long, I hadn't seen him for a long time before he passed. I'm definitely gonna miss him as I do. I miss all the old guys. He was a great man. Thank you. Uh, the court approves the resolution and report of the committee and enters the following order. And now this July 6th, 2021, in consideration of the resolutions presented by the committee appointed to draft resolutions in the death of James F. Sindoma, the said resolutions are adopted and it's ordered and directed that the resolutions herewith submitted and attached be adopted as an official expression of the Lycoming County Law Association and this court, and that the same be spread upon the records of the court and copies of this resolution be delivered to the family of James Sindoma and it's further ordered and directed that said resolution be entered at large upon the record of the court and that it be printed in the Lycoming Reporter. Um, I offer time now for my colleagues if they would like to say a few words. Judge Boyd or Judge Linhart. Uh, thank you, Judge Butts. I um, did not know Jim, so I don't really have anything specific to say, though I, as I've echoed before, I'm, um, get tired of doing these. I wish we weren't doing so many of these, but it is nice to hear everything. And I really liked the video. Um, that was a great touch, whoever tracked that down. That was Judge Lavecchio. He provided the link to me. I'm just the technical support, but thank you. Judge Linhart. Thank you, uh, Judge Butts. Um, I'm always grateful. It's sad that we do these. Um, and, and, and it's sad, obviously, that, that we've had so many of them recently, but I'm so grateful for the opportunity um, to, do, to do these services. And uh, thank you, Judge Butts and, and Michelle for organizing this again for us. I did not have, um, I knew of Jim Sindoma, but I never really knew Jim. So for me to just, to listen to the stories of those who knew him um, has been really enjoyable for me. I'm grateful that we do these, not only because I think they're nice for those who know uh, the person to be able to share their stories, but for those of us who, who never had the opportunity to know them, to, to get to hear those stories. So thank you all uh, for sharing um, those stories with us. Obviously, for those who knew him, uh, he will be missed. Thank you, Judge Buzz. Thank you. 
And I would just say my experience with him was when I was in, in the district attorney's office, he would do a random criminal case. Or when I worked for Judge Smith, he would come in and what a pleasant man. You would see him in the prothonotary's office or somewhere in the building. And he just was, hey, how are you? How are things going? And um, that collegiality is one of the things that always struck me about our bar and the bench and how everybody just seemed to be looking out for everybody. And to echo the, the judges who have spoken already to say that this opportunity to share our thoughts and memories is really nice because then we get to learn a little bit more about the person uh, from other people that knew them better. Um, I remember when I first moved here, when John and Ambrose Campana were both still alive. And I can remember when they came into court and that level of expertise that was in the building. And to think that um, Pete shared the opportunities for all of them to get together and what was it like to grow up with all of that? That um, just makes you wonder um, what life was like back then. But anyway, thank you um, all very much for uh, sharing your thoughts. And now I open it up to the rest of the, um, the members of the Law Association who are here, if they wanted to share a few words about their um, experiences, their knowledge of Mr. Sandoma. Joe Musto, let me get you to unmute. There you go. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I always enjoyed Jim when I dealt with him in practice. He was part of the older generation of Americans of Italian descent who I gravitated towards. They uh, reminded me of family and of home. Uh, he grew up tough. He was a fighter, but he was honorable, always honest with me always congenial. Uh, I enjoyed him very much. What's interesting to me part is uh, Judge Lavecchio mentioned Jim having changed his, his, his birth certificate. I have in my papers my dad's baptismal certificate, which he swiped from his mother's dresser and forged in order to get in when he was 15, but they caught him. So apparently Jim was a little better at that than my dad was. But what really struck me with Jim, uh, I didn't get to know Ms. Wallace, I would have liked to have him practice. But afterwards, my mom had to leave independent living in her apartment. And it turned out we couldn't keep her in the house. It just wasn't working with my brother and I. So she went to the hillside and we took her there and she was nervous, scared. And there was Jim. And it was impressive to me. Uh, he saw me, walked over to me, stuck a finger in my face and said, Musto, I remember I did not hate you. And I thought, well, that's, that's quite a compliment. <laughs> you know, I, I took that very nicely. He says, don't worry about your mother. We'll watch after her. And that's where I saw Jim do things which really impressed me. One of the things I saw, he organized things all the time at the hillside, made people comfortable. But the first time I was there for dinner, they'd have a little group there, I think five people at my mom's table and Jim was at the table. And he would gather their little order slips because some had vision impairments, some had different problems. And he would read what was on the menu to each of them and he'd write down for them. He'd check for them with a pencil what their orders were. Uh, sometimes, of course, that was, it was difficult, but it just impressed me that he found a way to be of service to others at that stage of his life. I remember my mother, when Jim was taken away from the hillside, she was very upset. And she knew him as Pete because I don't know why uh, mom was having some issues at that point, but she really missed him and loved him. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else like to share a few words about their experiences with Mr. Sendoma? Okay. All right, well. Thank you all very much for coming. I really appreciate it. Oh, and by the way, Judge Tier, I believe is on vacation this week. That's why he wasn't able to join us today or I'm sure he would have been here as well. Um, thank you all very much for participating in this special session of court. So this will now conclude the memorial service for James F. Sendoma. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for attending and sharing your special memories and thoughts about him. This hearing is adjourned. Thank you.